Hi, welcome back to my channel. I thought I would do a best of skincare video, which is actually a tag that was started by TT Sandra and Makeup TIA, Makeup by TIA. Anyway, I'm going to link their um, channels below. I was actually tagged by my friend Mary Heather Brown, who also has a YouTube channel on here. I will also link her channel below. Uh, but she tagged me specifically, so I thought I would do this video. And if you want to check out her channel, I think you will love it. She has um, a lot of great skincare videos, but she predominantly has a lot of videos on planning, which to me is so inspirational. I am a mess. I don't, I don't use a planner. I try and use one online sometimes. So anyway, I love watching those videos of hers. So check out her channel, and if you're interested in finding out what my answers are to the best of skincare um, questions, then just keep on watching. <laughs> So as you can probably tell, I have zero makeup on. I literally just jumped out of the shower, threw some moisturizer on, um, and was about to put makeup on, and I thought, you know what, I'm doing a skincare video, so why don't I just let it all hang out? And this way I can address some of my skincare issues as I'm answering the questions, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So anyway, I hope you don't mind looking at my bare face. If you do, I don't blame you. Just, you know, it'll just be, it'll just be for this video. <laughs> I promise. So let's get started. So my skin type is very dry. Um, it is very, very sensitive. I am eczema prone. Um, in high school, I had extreme eczema. I had it all on my upper lip. I had um, patches all over my face um, to the point where it wasn't just even dry and flaky, but it got um, pussy. Not to be gross, but like, pus, trust me, I had no dates my senior year in high school. Um, but it was a little bit pussy on my lip. So anyway, um, I've been dealing, I had been dealing with that for a very, very long time. And actually just recently, I'd say over the last five years, my eczema started to clear up a lot. And my skin has actually become a little bit more combo. I don't know if that's a hormonal thing. I don't know if... You know, I've changed my diet quite a bit, but anyway, my T-zone has gone a little bit more oily over the past few years. So, that's my skin, <laughs> that's my skin type. Confused, completely confused. No, it's mainly dry, um, a little bit combo, and very eczema prone. So, I, I have to admit, I am not very careful when it comes to my storage and my skincare products. Um, I just recently moved here to Vegas, so I literally just keep everything in my bathroom, which I know is not the best thing because I know humidity levels are not that great, but my bathroom doesn't have any windows, so I don't have to worry too much about sunlight, and because it's so dry here in Vegas, I think actually the little bit of humidity that is in the bathroom may actually be helpful. It kind of probably balances it out. <laughs> So my favorite ingredient is honey. I just, I have a real soft spot for bees. I think they're amazing little creatures. And honey is, I think, the only food in the entire world that never goes bad. So I've always had this sort of fascination with bees and with honey and, and, their, and their, you know, colonies and how they interact and everything and, and their culture. So anyway, I think honey is amazing. It's antibacterial, so I think it's great for um, when you do have acne, um, you know, clogged pores and things like that. Um, it's also, um, it has, it's like full of antioxidants, so I think it's great for anti-aging, and it's super, super moisturizing. So, I love honey. So, my most indulgent product would have to be my hand cream, hand oil situation. Um, I, I admit I have a lot of expensive um, skincare items, but this to me feels the most indulgent because it's not for my face. I feel like it's okay if you're kind of buying something expensive for your face, but I like to take care of my hands because I work with my hands as my day job, and, um, and I think, you know, we, we focus so much on our faces that hands age just as quickly, if not faster. And so um, I use the Jo Malone Vitamin E Hand Treatment, and I just, I love it. I think it has a great texture. It, you know, soaks into the skin quickly. It has a wonderful, um, lovely sort of floral scent. And it's one of those hand creams that even if I put it on and then I wash my hands, it still feels like it's working. I don't feel like I have to reapply it. So, um, so I really like this vitamin E treatment. 
And when I'm feeling extra special dry, what I will do is take out the Tatcha Gold um, Camellia Oil, uh, Beauty Oil, and I will put this on my cuticles and on the back of my hands, I'll work this in and then I'll put the moisturizer on top of it. And when I wake up, my hands feel amazing. <laughs> So for my best budget buy, it would have to be the Pixie Hydrating Milky Mist. Uh, when I first moved here to Vegas, um, all of our things were still on the moving truck for like three weeks while we were here. And I had packed the essentials and of course I had forgot facial mist because I just didn't, I didn't think about it, I didn't think I would need it, but I really needed it because the arid climate here really affected my skin. I was not used to it. I was coming from a fairly humid climate. So uh, we were in Target one day and I decided to pick this up to give it a shot. $15, um, so a lot cheaper than some mist that I've been using like the Tatcha mist and there was another mist, oh, I can't remember, but it was expensive. I got it at Barney's. Anyway, um, I thought, let me just get this as a sort of stopgap before we get our stuff from the, from the moving van. Um, and I really like it. It has hyaluronic acid, um, black oat, vitamins B, B2, and B6. It's paraben free. It's uh, not tested on animals. So I really enjoyed this mess. <laughs> Uh, I don't use any tools at the moment. I used to use Clarisonic. Um, I used to have this kind of combo. I would use Clarisonic and Acetophil um, soap bar that was antibacterial, and it kept my skin super clear. Um, what I didn't like about it though is that if I didn't use that antibacterial bar specifically, my skin would, um, it's almost like it, it handicapped my skin. It, like my skin couldn't actually fight off bacteria on its own anymore. So I stopped using it. Um, I stopped using the Clarisonic and then I just never really got back into using the Clarisonic. It sort of died too, like it stopped charging and I just haven't replaced it. So best mask. So I have three answers for this um, and I actually don't have any of my favorite sheet masks, which is my first answer. I love the pharmacy sheet masks. I get them at Sephora. My favorite was the moisturizing. I loved it. It's like a gel sheet mask, so it stuck to your skin. It didn't, it wasn't like all awkward and like stuck out. And it was, it really worked. I mean, the moisturizing mask was, it was so lovely. It would keep my skin plump for like at least a couple days. You know, it wasn't just sort of like a one day thing. It was like, it was so, so nice. And I love the fact that it kind of just stayed on my skin. My second answer is like a mask that you put on and you wash off. And my favorite is the May Lindstrom Honey Mud. Now I believe this is meant to be a cleanser, but because it's so thick and because I love honey, I figure I just kind of leave it on. So I leave it on until it's like pretty much kind of dry. And um, it's been great, especially when my skin has been feeling a little bit more combo. I feel like it really balances out my skin. The mud kind of dries my um, combo, my oily area, and then the honey really kind of replenishes my dry skin, which is like more like my cheeks and my forehead. So anyway, I really like the honey mud as a mask, but you can also use it as a cleanser. You can just kind of work it into the skin and then wash it off. And then my <laughs> my third answer for favorite mask is the Bosha Luminizing Black Mask. And this is a peel off mask, which I'm gonna be fully, fully honest. I don't think this is appropriate for sensitive skin because when I do use it, my skin definitely, I get like really red and blotchy, but there's something so satisfying about a peel off mask. And I have uh, big pores next to my nose here, kind of like by my cheeks. And sometimes I'll just put it right there, kind of like a Biore pore strip. I'll just put it here and like over my nose and onto the other side and then peeling it off. Oh my God, there's absolutely nothing more satisfying. If you follow me on Snapchat, you probably have seen me do it a couple of times because I just love peeling it off. So I had a really hard time coming up with um, a multi-use, best multi-use um, product. So I thought I would mention this. This is the um, Japanese UB Moisturizing Skin Cream. It's kind of like a cream, it's kind of like an ointment, it's just really, really great for dry skin. So I do like using this on like cracked cuticles, I'll use it 
on my elbows if they're really dry or like my my knees um, sometimes I don't really like moisturizing my feet but occasionally they do get really really dry especially in the summer when I'm wearing open toe shoes a lot um, I will put this sort of like on my heels um, and like my Achilles tendon area <laughs> So the one skincare brand that I cannot live without, and I think about this all the time because my husband is obsessed with the zombie apocalypse, I think if there was some sort of crazy apocalypse, the first thing I would do is run to the closest department store and just hoard up on La Mer products. So I cannot live without my La Mer soft moisturizing lotion, soft moisturizing cream, um, the original cream I still use. Um, I like the toner, I like the two masks that I have. I have a hydrating mask and a refining mask. I really just love most of their things. I use a moisturizing soft lotion during the day. Um, it's actually what I have on my face now. I use the moisturizing soft cream, which comes in the jar. I use that at night. If I'm feeling especially parched, I will use the original cream. Um, and. I am extremely dedicated to La Mer because I've been using the original cream, I think probably since I've been, I don't know, I'm just totally going to show my age, but I think for about 18 years now, I've been using the original cream, and I love it because it's actually very, very healing, and it's the only non-prescription cream that I feel like can actually knock out my eczema. So... You know, eczema gets to the point though where you, I think, really need to use a steroid cream to kind of get rid of it. Um, but if you catch eczema at a certain point, there are some products, you know, obviously it's very personal, there are some products out there over the counter that you can use. I think that sort of kind of makes it go away. And for me, it's creme de la mer. If I slather that on my face, if I feel like my skin's tingling, you can kind of tell when eczema is going to pop up, at least I can. Um, when it's going to pop up. If I slather that on my face and if I'm really, really good about keeping it moisturized, um, it really helps. And so that's why I've been completely dedicated to La Mer. I love the story behind La Mer, you know, the physicist who basically created it because he completely burned his face off. Um, and so it's something that I will, if I get like sunburned, I know you're not supposed to put cream on your face, but I will wait a day and then I'll start slathering La Mer on because I find it to be so healing. It's also something, again, this is really weird, if I have like um, a cut or if I've picked at a blemish, which I do, or, or things like that, if I put La Mer on there, which seems counterintuitive because it is so moisturizing, I do find that it actually helps my skin heal faster. So I absolutely love La Mer. So my best spot treatment. Um, so I don't generally have um, acne problems because I have dry skin problems, but when I do get a blemish, it is like, like of epidemic proportions. It is like, like one quarter the size of my head. I will probably get one or two a year and it'll just be so gigantic and disgusting. It's usually on my chin area or like around my nose or like on my upper lip something just really gross like you know just a really visible spot and i i can't let it i i am like an incessant pimple popper i cannot just let them go so i will pop the pimple which i think every dermatologist will tell you not to do so what i do is oh my god i'm like a dermatologist's worst nightmare so what i do is i pop the pimple uh, clean it out, obviously, and then I put Neosporin on it. And I swear to God, if you do that, it goes away. I put the Neosporin on, I cover it, maybe like the next day, it'll look like, okay, like it's kind of like drying up a little bit or whatever. Slap some more on, cover it up again, and then it's gone. So my favorite step in my skincare routine has got to be makeup removal. There is something so satisfying about just like taking it all off and then I just stare, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I just stare at that cotton pad and all the makeup on it and it just feels like I'm doing something. My favorite makeup remover is Cogendo's Cleansing Spa Water. I'm pretty much done with this one. Uh, but I love the liquid that you put on a cotton pad. I love the wipes that you can buy, but I do love, love, love this cleansing spa water. So La Prairie is definitely the first on my wish list. 
I've somehow scored a ton of their, like their deluxe samples. So I've used their caviar cream, their like ice crystal eye cream, something, and fell in love. And um, I may have to, I may have to give those a shot. Maybe when my La Mer is done. Although I don't know if I would give up my La Mer. I'll have to just sort of layer it in somehow. But anyway, anything from La Prairie, anything from Mila Morsi. I would, I mean, I would die to try her stuff. I think I, again, I had a bunch of deluxe samples. Her like neck firming cream, you could actually see a difference. Um, I would love to try her like body oil. I think she has like a cleansing milk. So yeah, anything from, from the Mila Morsi line as well. So those are my answers to the best of skincare tag questions. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned what not to do, like, don't pop your blemishes. I don't think, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm not going to stop doing it, but I don't think it's a good idea. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe if you haven't below. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you in my next video.